Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, exciting day today. Uh, David Vaz, thank you very much. Uh, our next EA developers, he finally fixed um, pretty much the network interface so you can actually make calls and text people. Uh, finally, this is fixed. It's been a while since um, the Z3 was, has been released and I've been waiting for this day for about a couple of weeks now. So it's exciting to see this and I'll, today I'll be showing you how to install this on your Z3 on all variants apparently. Uh, this is what he's saying on the thread right now. And so I'll leave a link down here uh, so you can read about it and say thanks to this guy. He put in heaps of work on this, I can assure you that. So head over to this link and you can go on the downloads tab and you'll find the download which is the latest one, 15th 20. So latest one, um, just click on that and just go ahead and direct download that and apart from this you'll also need Google Apps because they, they he hasn't specified that they're in there but I believe it can't be so it's like a separate package so we'll just go ahead to s.basketbuild.com slash gaps uh, I'll leave a, link, a direct link to the Android 5.0 gaps uh, Google Apps so just hit download on this page and it will download very shortly and download the peer 5 I thought this was some some scam thing, but it's like it's like um, peer to peer sharing, but through your browser. So it's definitely going to be very very quick. It even tells you how fast it will be, uh, the percentage down there at the bottom. So overall, this should take around 30 minutes to download. Uh, so I'll be back when all this is downloaded, and we'll get to flashing or flashing it onto our device very soon. Alrighty, so both downloads are finished now. So what you want to do now is go ahead and plug in your phone into your computer and we'll copy both files to the phone. So here, um, we'll just open up a new window and uh, you can choose to copy it to the internal storage or the external storage uh, or the SD card. Uh, it doesn't really matter but I would prefer putting everything on the SD card just in case something goes wrong on the internal card. So just select both of those and just drag them over. And make sure it copies to the root of the storage just so it's easier to find unless you've got a specific folder to uh, put your ROMs in. So copying this shouldn't take too long, maybe a couple minutes. And once that's done, uh, I'll be back to my device. All right, so now we've copied both files to our phone. Uh, all you need to do now is reboot back into your recovery. I, I'm sure it can be either TWRP or CWM, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I do have a video on covering like uh, unlocking the bootloader, rooting, and that installs a custom recovery as well. So um, I'll leave that in the more info uh, as a last section on there. So right now all you need to do is restart your phone. Uh, for those who don't have this advanced reboot menu, I'll show you how to do it um, like manually supposedly. Uh, so just hit restart, uh, restart like you normally would. Alright, and when it's restarting, uh, your phone will have an LED light up here and when it turns purple, you press, you hold volume down. So like now. And that will get you into your recovery. Okay, so once you're in your recovery, uh, I would like to say that you should make a backup of your current ROM, especially if you haven't made a, um, if you haven't made a, um, a NAND, like, sorry. If you haven't actually made a, uh, uh, Sony's, like, stock ROM backup, so you want to just select all this, and I would, I'd back up the TA anyway, and just slide to backup, I'll put it on the micro SD card, so that's about 2 gigabytes, actually 3, so 3 gigabyte, um, backup, so we'll back up now. Now uh, this might take a little bit, but it shouldn't take too long. Okay, so the backup has finished, which is good. Uh, so instead of restarting, you want to hit back. If it doesn't let you, if it doesn't let you, uh, just restart and just hold uh, volume down when it gets to the purple LED. Okay, so now this is finished, just hit the back button again and select the Google Apps pack package down below. Tap on that and swipe to flash. And this shouldn't take long either. And once it does finish, uh, we'll restart the device. Done. And just tap on Reboot System. And we should be on our way to Android Lollipop. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that. No. Okay. Backlight kicked in. And we have our Sign Engine Mod uh, boot logo or boot uh, animation. So this usually takes a little bit longer because of first boot. 
and this may take up to five minutes so I will just leave this uh, to do its business and I'll be back when it's finished so now uh, uh, CM12 is just or Android is just um, optimizing uh, the applications to run on the Android runtime instead of Delvic so this part just takes a little while but we'll should go through pretty quickly alright so right off the bat we got our welcome screen and we did have a system UI crash but that's pretty typical of something like this just tap OK and we'll dismiss it and if this does keep on going uh, we may have flashed uh, an incompatible Google Apps package uh, something along the lines of that or this uh, build isn't working properly but I'm sure a quick factory reset will do it, its work if this doesn't solve itself yep so we'll just have to restart alright we're gonna have to forcibly restart so I think you just hold either all the buttons or just power for 10 seconds alright three vibrations and just turn it back on and get yourself back into recovery when the LED shines alright okay it looks like cyanogen recovery uh, it's really dark I don't know if you can see that but there so we're gonna have to uh, try wipe Re hmm. factory reset there it is uh, it's really hard to see but if you look closer you'll be able to factory reset and I can see a little android spinning around so we'll just give it a couple of seconds uh, but just try factory reset and reboot back into android and we'll see what happens okay so it was a little bit strange I did a factory reset in the Cyanogen mod recovery which was super dark and I couldn't see anything and then I kind of held volume up and plugged it in uh, plugged in the USB and then it just kind of worked uh, after like there was still another pop up I think but I pressed it again but that was a bit weird so because I thought I turned it off so if you can kind of fiddle around with it to get it working I'm sure that's fine um, I'll report that as a bug or like a possible issue after but let's have a look at the uh, setup right here so it's pretty much working fine very smooth uh, we'll just select the English Australian language uh, let's see if Wi-Fi works oh yes it does so I'll just quickly connect to uh, my Wi-Fi service uh, so far so good um, everything seems to be working except I had a little trouble at the beginning as you guys saw uh, so that should connect and also we have data and, a, and mobile working which is excellent I think Wi-Fi takes a little bit longer to connect and now it's there so so far so good good impressions I'll let you guys know about the battery and some other features if I stumble upon it so tap and go is here too uh, NFC works I believe from the um, XDA post everything should work there wasn't anything that didn't work for him so touchscreen works uh, touchscreen works Bluetooth works Wi-Fi works NFC works uh, microphone and speakers the sensors uh, the camera OMX I'm not too sure what that is so I'll have a look at it and um, RIL which is the radio interface layer uh, so that covers your call SMS and data so all that seems to be working and nothing seems to be not working so this is great and I'll be back after setting up my account information okay so it's time for I guess first impressions we already have the C lock or the clock widget uh, that Cyanogen mod uh, has on their device uh, on their ROM uh, which is pretty nice seeing that already we have our normal camera function like that when we swipe towards the left and swipe to the right for phone and swipe up to unlock and we already have a notification so when you tap and hold you can see the application info to snooze and settings information uh, also well <laughs> also you can double tap to open it so right to the email and you can see all the animations are really fluid so far uh, the icons down here are a little bit smaller but I think that's just the launcher settings and here we have um, the app drawer and also in the settings which is pretty cool um, we also we already have um, stuff for the status bar, the notification drawer and themes already put into this build so fantastic already you can customize it pretty well uh, everything seems to work fine we'll just have a look at the camera and the camera is also launched by the hardware button I think on this side here if not that just does 
just gets a little bit a bit of a vibration there but we'll open up the camera ourselves then and hopefully we can yes next now oh, we do get a bit of a feed here let's see quality's all right I'm not and you can take photos with the shutter button uh, dedicated button here uh, it looks pretty well so far uh, let's see if our front facing works yep works fine and let's see anything else so this build should be on 5.0.2 lollipop uh, already I can see so many things we could uh, customize which is great so it is running 5.0.2 Lollipop. So I think that'll be it for this video. I guess I'll leave a review on later. Um, and thanks for watching, guys. I hope this tutorial helped you out. And this is actually pretty cool having uh, Simon Jamal and our Z3 so soon. And so thanks for watching, guys. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video.